we're going to move um, into the Word of God, a very simple message on this morning, but I pray that it brings forth fruit in somebody's life. Exodus chapter 32. I'm going to begin reading at verse 1. And it says, And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we know not what has become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And Moses said unto, and the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, hath corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly. Look at your neighbor say quickly. You know, he'd been gone for 40 days. And God said, you fainted quickly. 40 days, just 40 days, and you already ready to throw in the towel? They have turned quickly out of the way, which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be the gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Down to verse 15. And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. The tables written on both their sides, on the one side and on the other were they written. And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, graven upon the tables. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome. But the voice of them that sing do I hear. And it came to pass, as soon as he came now into the camp, that he saw the calf and the, down, the dancing. And Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hand and brake them beneath the mountain. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire and ground it into powder and strawed it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. My, my. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did the people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? You all may have your seats right there. We're going to keep reading, though. Give you a break. Verse 22. And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. For they said unto me, Make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we know not what has become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me. Then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. It just happened. It came, throw it in there, and then boom, the calf just came out. It wasn't my fault. It just, uh, the verses before said that he fashioned it and molded it. Come on, tell the truth, Aaron. Tell the truth. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. They were exposed. The divine protection that God had put on them was no more. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? 
let them come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, every man his companion, every man his neighbor. And the children of, Eli, of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And there fell the people that day about 3,000 men. Somebody say, what a mess. What a mess. For Moses has said, consecrate yourself today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. I'm going to stop right there. This is a mess. I want to speak for a few moments from the thought, what to do when you've made a mess? What to do when you've made a mess? Perhaps I should start off with what you shouldn't do when you make a mess. Number one, you shouldn't blame anybody other than yourself. <laughs> Amen. Don't blame anybody other than yourself. Amen. At the end of the day, you're not the captain of anybody's ship, but you are the captain of your own ship. You determine your own decisions. You have to admit to the role that you played in the mess that you made. Your baby mama is not the problem. You chose, you knew that attitude when you chose to lay down. Amen. Hallelujah. Number two, don't think that your condition is normal. Don't think the mess that you are in is just the way life is. You know, misery loves company. Oftentimes people who are in messes gravitate to people who are in messes. And if they're not careful, the only vision of life they see is what they are in. And they will begin to feel that there isn't anything better to strive for or to live for. But don't feel like your situation is normal. Know that it is abnormal. It's not what God intended for you. When God fashioned you in your mother's womb, that's not what God wanted for you. He did not want you to be going through and living the life that's in the mess that it is. That was not his plan. And then number three, don't give in to hopelessness. You may take responsibility for it. You may know it's abnormal, but you may feel that there's no way out. There's no change coming. The, the habits are too strong. The demons are too mighty. It, they will, just won't let you go. And this is your lot in life. But I want you to know that as long as Jesus is on the throne, and he is, and as long as there is breath in, their, in your body, which there is, there is hope. Amen. As long as you breathe, there is hope for a better tomorrow. As long as you are breathing, there is hope for a better tomorrow. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, go hard for the Lord. Go hard for God. If you're going to get anything out of God, you have to at least put the same amount of effort in seeking him as you did when you was working for the devil. You, you, you have to at least run as hard. For God, as you ran for the devil. You know what it was. The devil gave you supernatural en energy. You worked all day. You know you're sleepy. But when the urge comes, it don't matter what time it is. All of a sudden, you have enough energy to do your devilment. <laughs> your mess didn't make, you didn't make that mess just simply because you was lazy. You just ran hard in the wrong direction. <laughs> Amen. And it's amazing how many people get saved and all of a sudden that, that I mean, people who, people who oftentimes are given over to addictions, whatever the addiction is, are some of the most creative people in the world because they know how to support their habit. They're going to pull some strings, run some tricks, work extra jobs, whatever they have to do. 
they're going, they're running hard. They're running hard. You, you're working hard for the devil. But it's amazing when we get saved, all of a sudden, I'm too tired to come to church Thursday night. Ah, worship pastor, I catch you on Sunday. I'm tired. I worked all day long. I'm tired. Well, well, it didn't stop you from hitting the drug den when you wanted a fix. I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. I'm just trying to be for real. If you're going to get something out of God, you got to at least run as hard for him as you did for the devil. Amen. One reason why Paul was such a mighty man of God is Paul only had two speeds, zero and 100. And it was probably zero only when he was asleep. Amen. When he wasn't saved, he ran hard for the devil. And when the Lord interrupted him, he didn't slow down. He just ran hard for God. That same determination, that same in ingenuity, <laughs> that same energy it took to get into the mess is the same you need to put towards God. If God is going to do something for you. The Bible says like this, as you are with me, I'll be with you. If you want 100% out, you have to put 100% in. Amen. You can't come to church every now and then. Pray every now and then. Amen. Hear the word of God every now and then. And expect God to do something mighty in your life. Yeah, you got to go hard. Look at your neighbor, so go hard. You know, and if you went going hard for the devil messed up your life that bad, how much more will going hard for God bless your life? Think with me, how much more can God bless you for putting forth effort in seeking the Lord? And I want to tell you something about God. There, God, um, he never lets darkness be comparable to light. He never lets evil be on the same plane as good. It's really no competition between him and the devil. It's not like it's gearing up to the final war, Satan versus Jesus. They're going to duke it on out. No, when God get ready, he's just going to send an angel. That's beneath God to deal with the devil. The Bible says that light shineth in darkness and darkness can't put it out. One version says the force of darkness wasn't strong enough to overcome the light. So light is more powerful than darkness. That's why I'm so excited about heaven. It's easier for us because we're people of sorrow to imagine the woes of hell. But regardless of how terrible hell is, and it is, I don't believe God would make hell so bad that it overshadows how good heaven is. God said it like this, where sin about grace did much more abound. God is not going to be outdone. God ain't going to be outdone by the devil. Amen. I'm, I'm going to give you one. The Bible says this. It says, don't return evil for evil, but overcome evil with good. It didn't say don't overcome evil with evil because you can't overcome something with a force that's equal to or less than the force that you're trying to overcome. If you have to overcome something, you need a force that's greater than evil. You can't overcome evil with evil. Two wrongs don't make it right. Uh, I for now going to leave everybody blind. Amen. Some of you struggling right now with your relationships because it's always tick for tack. They did this. I'm going to do that. They did that. I ain't going to give them that. They ain't give me nothing for Chris. So I'm not going to give them nothing, Chris. But the Bible says, don't, don't return evil for evil, but defeat evil with the power of good. Because good has the power from God to conquer over evil. It has the power of God to conquer over evil. And we know it's true because the Bible says what love and kindness has God drawn us. God could have chose to draw us with, with his anger and with his beating and with his wrath. And, but he chose to draw us with good. And while we were yet sinners, yet the enemies of God, Christ died for each and every one of us. Ain't you glad that God's good power force is much better and much greater than evil? And I don't care how dark your life has been, when the light of Jesus Christ comes in your life, darkness is going to have to flee. You ought to look at two, three, two or three people and tell them, uh, when I was surrounded by darkness, God just turned on the light. Yeah. Hallelujah. What you need is the light of Jesus to come on. 
Amen. We used to sing, walk in the light, the beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around me by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. The devil can't stop Jesus. See, that's why the devil works so hard to keep you out of church. That's why he works so hard to keep you from getting in the presence of God. That's why if he can let all hell break loose, he will in order to stop you from getting into the house of God. Because he knows if you just make it into the house of God, he's going to start losing his hold on you. Actually, he fought you from coming to church this morning because he knew that if the presence of God was here and it's here, something was going to happen to you. Hallelujah. You better, you better fight. You better that, that, that when your conscience was trying to stop you from going to sin and you fought your conscience to get to it, you better fight against that thing that's trying to stop you from coming to church. Fight against that thing. Make up in your mind, come hell or high water, I'm going to be in church. If my house is burning down, I'll worry about it when I get home, but I got to be in church. God is able. Jesus is able. Jesus is able. So what do you do when you made a mess? And they made a mess, thanks of God. They've made a mess. The Lord brought them out of Egypt. They was in the wilderness, and um, see, all they had in their mind was the land flowing with milk and honey. All they had in their mind was what God can give them. What they didn't understand is before God can give them, God had to work on them. He had to make them something before he gave them something. Otherwise, the gift would destroy them. Notice the story of the prodigal son. When he got old enough, he went to his father and said, Father, give me what pertains to me. And he got it and messed it up. But when he came home, he said, Father, make me as one of your servants. Hallelujah. You have to let God work on you on the inside. See, your problem is not that you're homeless. Your problem isn't necessarily the addiction. Your problem isn't that your family is broken and you want it back. The problem has to start with who am I? What is it in me that brought me to that place? And when you deal face to face with the man in the mirror, with the help of God, you are on your way. The presence of God, I'm, I'm about to go and believe it now, I'm going to be done shortly. The presence of God, the, 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 the blessing of God, the protection of God was on the children of Israel. We know because they had many enemies, you know, many people plotting against them and they overcome all of them because God's presence was protecting them. His favor was a shield about them. But when they created and committed this heinous act, the Bible said they were left naked in front of their enemies. In other words, at that point, if their enemies attacked, they would have been overthrown. At that point, if Satan comes, their life will be in shambles because the protection of God was no longer there. So the question then is, how do we live clothed in power, clothed in glory, clothed with the protection of God in our lives? Moses came down and saw them in that state. And he was highly upset. They took their earrings and their gold. The first thing they did, first of all, was they were offended at the fact that it was taking longer than they had hoped. It's taking too long. They told me that if I give my life to Christ tomorrow, magically everything will be turned upside down. Nobody told you that. We told you Jesus is the answer. And he is the answer. You just got to work the answer. You got to work the answer. Amen. And what they didn't realize is when Moses was in the mountain for 40 days, God was actually doing things behind the scenes that was going to bless them. But because they didn't have enough insight to see what God was doing behind the scenes, they lost hope. They lost hope. You have to allow God to give you some insight. Raise your hand and say, Lord, give me insight. Even though I don't see what you're doing, let me know that you're actually working on my behalf behind the scenes. 
Hallelujah. Behind the scenes. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel God. You know, when you plant a seed and you see that bud get up out of the ground, all you see is just a little bit. But what you don't see, the biggest part of it is what's underneath the surface. Keep coming to church. Keep praying. Keep seeking God because God is building something that you don't see. But after a while, the work that's being done on the inside is going to show up on the outside. And you'll be screaming, oh, what a change in my life. They were offended. They took their, their possessions, their resources, and they used their resources the wrong way. They took their money and used it on things that wasn't going to benefit them. They formed, praise God, this calf. Amen. And they began to worship. Now notice, after they formed the calf, then Aaron said, but tomorrow's a feast day unto Jehovah. So he was telling them, we're going to worship Jehovah and this calf. That's why they said, these be the gods. They didn't turn their back fully on the church. They just decided God needed some help. God needed them a little bit of help. Then he, he ain't doing it fast enough. So I know you told me I need to be in church every Sunday, but it's taking too long. So I'm going to get me another job. And I know I'm going to start missing Sundays, but God understands because God needs some help. God needs some help. The Bible says they burnt sacrifices unto those. In other words, they evoked the presence of demons, the presence of false gods. And that's what you do. I'm going to tell you this. Frequency of doing something attracts spirits. The first time you steal, you don't have a thief spirit, a spirit of theft, a, a kleptomaniac spirit. You're not the first time. But if you keep stealing, you're going to attract that spirit. And after a while, that spirit is going to grab a hold to you. And you ain't going to be able to stop stealing no matter how hard you try. It's the same thing with lust, pornography, drugs. Nothing summons spirits like drugs. I'm telling you, nothing summons demons like drugs. But I thank God that God is more powerful than any demon. Amen. Are there any deliver people in here? Just wave. Help somebody with faith. Help somebody with their faith. Just wave it loud. Wave it high. Wave it so they look around all these people God has delivered. Some from drugs, some from alcohol, some from sex, some from porn. But whatever you've been delivered from, you can testify that God's light is better than devil's darkness. God's strength is made perfect in weakness. You can testify that God is able to clean up your messy life. You lost your family, you got your family back. You lost your marriage, you got your marriage back. You lost your job, you got a better job. You were homeless, now you got a place to stay. Woo! The things that God can do when you work the system and clean up your messy life. Look what it said. The first step, he said, he that is on the Lord's side, come to me. There has to be a verbal and physical commitment to go to the Lord's side. You have to make up your mind you're going to be on God's side. You have to make up your mind before the temptation comes. When the temptation comes, that ain't the time to try to make up your mind. You already beat. Make up your mind before the temptation comes. Make up your mind before the devil comes. On this morning, if you have not, make up your mind, I'm going on God's side. You tell the devil, regardless of what you throw at me, I'm leaning on God's everlasting arms. And I'm going to make you have to make up in your mind verbally and physically that you're going to be on God's side. What does that mean physically? That means you come to church. Amen. Very simple. It means you come to church. Number two, he told them, and this is a very sad instance. But when he said he is on the Lord's side and those on the Lord's side came, he told them, get a sword and started killing those who decided they were not going to be on God's side. Now, on the day of social media. You have to put disclaimers to everything. Where God is not telling you to kill nobody. But he is telling you to cancel anything in your life that's not going with you over to the Lord's side. Cancel. In. I know he was your homeboy from the cradle. But if he is determined, he's going that way. You got to cancel it. Well, co pastor, see, but see, you don't understand. We, we made a covenant that we were going to be there. Well, it's time to cancel the covenant. Let the blood of Jesus cover that covenant. 
Because if he, how can two walk together except they agree? And since he's already said he's not going with you, and you made up your mind you're not going with him, then the natural order of things is just, Jesus sends a sword. Counsel things in your life. That's why, that's why you need, there's some shows you might need to stop watching. I can't tell you what they are. You know better than I do. Some places you need to stop going. They're not always a sin, but if they hold memories for you, it's going to draw you back. Cancel it. Let it go. Keep on trucking with God. And I'm going to tell you, it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice, but I'm going to tell you, the favor of God is like a scent. It's like a scent. It's like a smell, the favor of God. But, but your scent, your, your, the favor, uh, you don't obtain the favor of God by just confession. You obtain it because you make yourself a sacrifice to God. And then you're a sweet-smelling savor. And God changes. Next thing you know, you have favor where you didn't have favor. You have folk wanting to do things for you where before they just ignored you. Because of sacrifice that was made. It's a sacrifice, but make it. And then the last thing he said to do. He said, consecrate yourself to the Lord today. And when you look at that phrase, not just the word, but the phrase that's used, it means three different things. Number one, it's saying dedicate yourself. It is also saying fill your hand with the Lord. So now you have taken stuff out of your hand. Now you replace those things that you've taken out with the Lord. Some people start, stop halfway through deliverance. Oh, I'm free now from drugs. I thank God. Woo, I'm free. But uh, uh, I ain't going to all that church now. I don't understand that Bible. I ain't going to read it. But, you know, I'm a better person. God is. So you stop in halfway. You let God take something out your hand, but you're not letting them put something back in. And Jesus told me when the devil is cast out, he goes back looking for a place of rest. And he said, I'm going to go back to my old house. Oh, I see him over there. It's swept. It's clean, but it's not inhabited. They didn't invite God in. God hasn't been filling them up. They're not occupied with the things of God. So let me go get seven more devils worse than myself. And we're going to move in here, me and some roommates. And we're going to make the state of that person worse than it was before. If you're going to mean it all the way, then you might as well just let God fill your hand with the things of God. And then when he said that, he said, he said, he said, Moses has said to them, consecrate yourself today, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, and may bestow your blessing. In other words, he said, you have made such a great sacrifice today for killing those people that were not on my side, for canceling those things. Don't let that sacrifice go to waste because you refuse to replace it with something else. Let God fill you up with something else. And after you have committed to God's side, number one, after number two, you cancel everything that's not on his side. And then after number three, you consecrate yourself to him. Then number four, the curse that was on you will be reversed. The curse that was proclaimed on your life will be where G, uh, Moses said that, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. The same day the mess was made, God said, you don't have to wait a thousand days. Let me proclaim a blessing over you now. And if you let me proclaim a blessing over you now, that word is going to get the work behind the scenes. And if you just endure... You're going to see the glory of God. I don't care how bad your mess is. It's not too bad for the Lord.